In this lesson, we're going to talk about creating groups or security groups within the actual Active Directory. The purpose of this is to apply permissions to an entire group rather than each individual user. And you'll see what I mean here in just a second. If I right click, I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder. Now you can see on a previous lesson, I've created these two shared folders. I'm going to go ahead now and just create a brand new one. And let's just call this one the Sales Department uh, share folder. So I'm going to call it Sales. And maybe I only want the sales members of the sales group to be part of this. Now there is no group that already exists called sales. I'm going to actually create one. But I want to assign them the permissions for this folder and have them be the only ones who have permission for this particular folder. So what I'm going to need to do is go to Start, Administrative Tools, and open up our Active Directory Users and Computers. Once it pops up, you're going to go ahead and make sure you have the users selected. You may have to expand this in order to find it, but here's my users organizational unit. You can see that I've got the administrative account, I've got a guest account, and these I've created in a previous lesson on creating users. The rest of these are all groups that are available. Now the default group that everybody is a member of that's created on the domain is the domain users group, and you can see that one right there. What I want to do is create a brand new one. So I'm going to go ahead and right click in an empty spot, we're going to choose new and we're going to choose group. I could have also clicked the little icon up here from the toolbar and that would have done it as well. The group name, I'm going to go ahead and call this group the sales group. I have are presented with a few different options. The domain local just means on this domain specifically, which is the domain of my computer, which is pending.local. If I had multiple domains in a forest, I'd want to have global. And this is the default setting. This is most likely the setting you're going to want to have, and you're just not really going to touch this most often. You've also got the group type, security and distribution. 99% of the time when you're creating groups, it's going to be for the security type. And the reason why I'm saying that is because it's security in the fact that we're going to actually use it for permissions. And so we're going to focus mostly on security type groups. And you can see I'm going to actually focus on setting the sales group of having permissions on the sales folder. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. So these are mostly always just left as the default. Now if I hit OK, you're going to see the group was created. Also look at the fact that almost every group you see in here, in fact every group you do see in here, is a security group. So they're based on security permissions and so forth. So I've created this group. Well that's just great. I've got a group. It doesn't mean anything. I don't have any users for the group. And so what I'm going to need to do is actually assign users for the group. And on a previous video we looked at creating users. I'm going to create one more just by going to new, user, and I'm going to call this one user3. And that'll be their name and their login will also be just user3 for this particular video. Then next, we're going to go ahead and add that password to it. And I'll go ahead and hit next and finish. Alright, so this user 3, I want to make this user 3 part of the sales group. Let's just say this is a member of the sales group that I want to use. So I've got two different ways of doing it. If I click, double click on the user, or you can also right click on the user and choose properties, it's going to take you here to the properties. If I look for the member of tab, there it is, the member of, it's telling me the members of the group are, are basically the groups that this person is a member of. And I can go ahead and hit add right now and type in sales. And you can see now that the sales group, I am now a member of the sales group, or at least the user three is a member of the sales group. I can go ahead and hit apply and OK. And so now they are. Now I can also do this from a different way. If I know the group that I want to work with, I could also right click on it and choose properties. And I can figure out who the members are. You can see the user three is the only member of this group. I could add additional users if I wanted to. So I can go both ways as far as the user and add the user to the group or go to the group and then basically add the user from the group on that side. And you can see basically this group is not a member of any other group. I can actually kind of develop a hierarchical system based on groups as well, making them members of different groups. And we're not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. So now the sales group has been created. The only user that's part of the sales group is user 3. So let's go back over to my folder that I have over here. Right click on it. We're going to go to the properties. You can see if I go to, let's see, sharing. I'll go ahead and share this one. This is from a previous video of sharing. So I'm just going to move through this one kind of quickly. Let's go to the permissions. 
everyone has a permission I'm just going to remove them at the moment and we're going to go ahead and add the sales and now the sales group has sharing permissions as far as reading capability let's just go ahead and give them reading and the ability to write to the folder as well hit apply and if you remember from a previous video I'm going to go ahead and hit OK here we need to set the settings on both the sharing and the security in order for this to work so let's go to the security we're going to go to edit add the sales group and there's the sales group and let's go ahead and give them the modify ability so they can read and write from both the NTFS or the security permissions as well as the sharing now if you look at this the only people that have sharing permissions are the sales group and the security group as well I cannot even access this folder from the administrator itself and let me just show you if I go to start type in backslash backslash SRV-1 which is the way of location of actually going to this particular folder through the share resources I can see sales here but if I double click it and you can see who I'm logged in as I'm logged in as the domain administrator the domain administrator doesn't even have rights to this particular folder because I have not given them the rights to it only the sales group has the rights if I make a change let's go ahead and go back to the sales group and let's go ahead and add to the group now the administrator if I, let's see alright there we go okay the administrator is now a member of that group I'm going to go ahead and hit apply and okay now let's go ahead and see I may have to actually close this and open it back up but let's just find out double click the sales I have the problem so I'm just going to close that let's go ahead and reopen that share there we go now let's go ahead and see if the administrator can access this still cannot so I still have a problem now let me go ahead and verify this because it's not letting me in the sales folder even though I am part of the group now I'm going to right click on it just go to properties just to make sure go to sharing advanced sharing permissions the sales group does have read and write capabilities I'll go ahead and hit OK under the security the sales group does have modify read and modify capabilities and write so the administrator if I double click the administrator I can go ahead and go to the member of and I can actually see that they are a member of the sales group so everything is set right the only problem here is this may just be a restart problem so let me go ahead and restart my computer and log back in go ahead and log off and log back in and let's go ahead and retry this go back down to start we're going to type in backslash backslash there it is SRV1 click on the sales and there I go now that I am so it just needed to be restarted in order for the settings to take effect so I am now a member of the sales group let's go ahead and also verify this by going to a client so I'm going to switch over to a Windows 7 computer that's on this domain and I'll go ahead and log in as administrator not as administrator let's go ahead and log in as user 3 and I'll type in my password for the user account log in and let's go ahead and check our share go to start backslash backslash and we're going to type in SRV-1 which is our server and I can go ahead and see all the files and so forth the printers that's being shared from my computer if I try to go into the sales and there I go I can actually get into the sales folder and just to make sure I'm going to right click new text document and you can see that I'm there so the user 3 is a member of the sales group and can now modify or read items that are part of or have permissions for the sales group like this sales folder so this is creating groups within the active directory